media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Ted Dixon. He's the CEO and co-founder of InkResearch.ca, Canada's first online financial news and research service, providing insider news and knowledge to investors. His website, CanadianInsider.com, home of the Canadian Insider Club. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Jim, thanks for having me back, and thanks for everyone uh, tuning in. What's going to happen to the Canadian dollar post-election? I'll put my former uh, foreign exchange traders hat on and uh, you know, look at the Canadian dollar, and, and here's my take on it. Of course, in the short term, you know, you have technicals and what's the price of oil doing on any given day. So in the short term, you know, uh, it, it, those types of factors are likely to be as important as anything else. But sort of in the medium term, you know, over the next year, year or two, I think as we stand right now, it's a bullish outlook for the Canadian dollar. And, you know, people, a lot of people are thinking, oh, no, the Canadian dollar, it's, you know, doomed. We have a liberal spending government. And I mean, in a political sense, but just see, they do spend a lot of money. And, um, you know, uh, the problem with that, well, the fact of the matter is, is that though the currency markets are beauty contests, a relative beauty contest, and when you compare the Canadian uh, fiscal outlook to the American fiscal outlook, which is what the Canadian dollar is priced against, you know, a, a foreign investors who aren't, you know, who, who don't have the same kind of exposure to Canadian politics and, and, and the headlines that we do, they look at it and they go, well, you know, I'll take me some of that Canada as well because I think, you know, their fiscal house is, you know, you know, doing as well or maybe better, or maybe not. You know, it's in the ballpark of the U.S. and they, for diversification, the Canadian dollar is going to find some bids. Now, uh, that's it, sort of in the medium term, but there are some big risks for it. And uh, I think the big elephant in the room is the housing market. And I know in the short term, the energy markets, you know, if the oil and gas industry were to go into the tank again, let's hope it doesn't for, you know, for the most people who are employed in that industry, um, yeah, the Canadian dollar would would be in a, in a, uh, in trouble, just because <laughs> for some reason the uh, currency markets uh, see Canada the Canadian dollar is a bit of a petrol currency. But I think a bigger, a big, if not bigger, driver is the housing market, and for two reasons. One is we get a lot of foreign investment in housing, and you know I, I don't know where Trudeau actually stands on that. Uh, he was the, they were the only party not to have a. Uh, a Sort of anti-form buyers provision in in the in their platform, and then he kind of said, "Oh yeah, we will we'll do something about that." Uh, so, but you know, with Trudeau, I mean, you know, what just because he said he's going to do something doesn't mean he's going to deliver. Uh, so, I, I think the Liberals are probably of the three parties right now the, the the most friendly towards foreign investment flows into the Canadian real estate market. I mean, one of their one of their lead candidates is a professional house flipper, uh, basically. So, you know, they, they, you know, they, they're, uh, they're up to, uh, you know, the, the, the Liberal Party is, is, is certainly not, um, going to do anything, I think, uh, actively to upset the Canadian housing market. That being said, there are factors that could, you know, be on their control that that could um, hit it, and I'm not predicting that. And you have a number of guests uh, on House Street uh, that are much more in tune with the housing market than I am. I'm just saying it's a risk, and so so long as the housing market does not uh, uh, correct meaningfully uh, for a prolonged period, I think the Canadian dollar would be all right because. The, uh, if you did have an, un an unraveling of the housing market, and again, that's a risk. I'm not predicting that. You would have a lot more discontent. And so you saw in this election, the People's Party 
vote basically on a popular vote, you know, increased tenfold. Now, that was off of a small base, sure. But, you know, and that was, all, you know, and they, they, and I'm trying to be clinical here, uh, just, you know, they mustered a lot of support from people concerned about lockdowns and the like. Well, think about what would happen if the housing market started to unravel, right? Just th- like as a thought experiment. And in that case, you would have, I think, a lot more political risk associated with Canada by foreign investors. And right now, it's an advantage because when you compare us to, to the American situation, which I think is much more divisive than in Canada, you, you know, Canada looks pretty good. So I, I wouldn't get too bear- – my point is I wouldn't get too bearish on the Canadian dollar in the medium term at all here. Uh, but I would watch the housing market. And, of course, then, you know, on the short term, you've got those short-term factors. Well, the Liberals want to increase Canada's migration uh, tremendously. They also want to invite a lot of political refugees into the country. You can't be against foreign home buyers because then mm-hmm. where would these people live? Yeah, immigration, I think. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, uh, yeah, immig- immigration is, is a key driver of the housing market and, uh, the Liberal Party is, uh, pro-immigration. So again, you know, I, I, uh, I would look at the housing market as, as a as an elephant in the room, but you know, right now it, it, it doesn't. It's not a, a problem for the Canadian dollar, and but it's something to watch. Can metals hold their summer lows, or are we going to see another big price surge? Well, I mean, right now they're 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 threatening a price collapse, and I think this is a fear and uncertainty surrounding the Federal Reserve. Uh, what they're going to do on Wednesday, partly, um, part of it, you know, is concerns about lockdown, concerns about China. Um, but I think, you know, as in Canada, the elephant in the room may be housing. U.S., the elephant in the room is Washington policy, both monetary and fiscal. And when it comes to the U.S. dollar and cap, and that's tied to the capital markets. And what we, we put out a, we put a, uh, report out on weekend over the on monday looking through china property related fears because uh metals i think were being hit by china concerns china slow down the chinese government releasing stockpiles and the like china slowing down because of the housing i mean i've heard the theory that the housing boom in china is now over well maybe but we'll see Uh, the fact of the matter is the Federal Reserve has zero overnight interest rates, and it's not going to change anytime soon. However, the Fed is essentially in a boxing match. It cannot win. Uh, it's in the ring, but it's got two opponents. It's got inflation, and it's got deflation. So right now, the Fed is saying, I'm coming after inflation. Oh, watch, I'm going to get you inflation. You watch it. I, I'm getting you. I'm aiming for you. Problem is, is that if the Fed really does go after inflation, the deflation opponent opponent's going to knock him, in, you know, hit him in the nose and knock him on the carpet, right? So, the Fed, you know, can talk a brave game about going after inflation. Good luck, good luck uh, tapering, you know, and good luck raising interest rates ever, you know. And I'm afraid though there is a risk that they will taper, and uh, you know, then Mister uh, Deflation will come in and knock them on the nose, hit them in the nose, potentially knock them out. And you can say, well, that's fine. Oh, well, poor Fed. Yeah, but unfortunately, there'll be a lot of uh, damage uh, in the capital markets and, and, and initially probably in the commodity markets if that happens, because uh, then you you, let, you would have a, a likely a scare into the U.S. dollar for all the wrong reasons, right? And the uh, you know because they're they're raising interest rates, they're tightening monetary conditions, i.e., you know, uh, restricting the supply of U.S. dollars. So that's pro US dollar it helps the US dollar um and you've got this sort of deflationary response and you know that's not going to be good for commodities now our view based off of what we've seen on insider activity is that we have some really strong support in the summer lows and you know I was just looking at the uh there is a uh, ETF in the US the XME and it uh, is toying with its 200-day moving average. That's that's the metals and mining ETF XME. It's uh, toying with its 200-day moving average. Uh, it's uh, taken out its August lows, but it's still above its uh, uh, July lows. So, you know, I think it's going to be hard for that to break down much further. But it's possible. And if the Fed is super hawkish on Wednesday, and they're determined to fight inflation. Meanwhile, you've got a Congress that seems to be dysfunctional. 
I mean, never mind a minority government candidate. It works. That's what, what's one reason why the Canadian dollar, I think, is going to do okay, relatively okay, over the next two years. It, you know, it, it's kind of what you see is what you get. But look, the, the Democratic Party is having a huge problem even passing its, it, you know, its stimulus bills. So, you know, it, it's going to be a, it could be a rough ride for the medals here. Uh, but in our view is still there's a lot of support. Uh, on those summer lows, and the Fed eventually, you know, I think it, if the Fed sees the left hook coming from the deflation, their deflation opponent, they're going to backpedal. And you know, they're 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 the question is how fast do they backpedal on their um, their chest pounding against inflation? And uh, you know, at some point they're going to have to make a choice: do they, you know, do they actually go after inflation, or do they stay on the defensive and try and stay away from the deflation the deflationary left hook? Which is, uh, you know, going to come their way pretty fast if they decide they're going to tighten monetary conditions. We'll have more with Ted Dixon right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. Ted, what's the story with cryptocurrencies? Uh, we know people right now seem to be putting money into Bitcoin and other cryptos rather than into gold and silver. Is that a story that's going to continue? Well, as we talked about two weeks ago, I think, you know, the, the big risk right now with crypto is the regulatory counterattacks you're seeing primarily in the United States, other jurisdictions as well. But, uh, there is, I think, a, uh, a realization amongst a certain group in the global industrial complex, financial complex, not the industrial, but the financial complex, that cryptocurrencies are a threat. Gary Gensler, the uh, SEC chairman, uh, was apparently giving an interview with the, you know, can you get more status quo than the Washington Post? You know, it, you can see you can see who's lining up here against cryptos. And, you know, you've got some powerful vested interests who are determined to put a, you know, uh, put a roadblock in front of the crypto industry. I don't think they're going to be successful, but doesn't mean it's not going to hurt in the meantime. And I think it's hurting right now. I mean, we're seeing, uh, Bitcoins at a very, I mean, I'm not a technical analyst. You've got a number of guests who are much better than me at technical analysis, but it looks like, you know, Bitcoins at a very important level. 40,000 Ethereum as just before I came on to this uh, uh, interview was trading below 3,000 you know so there is a lot of fear about US regula- regulations there's a lot of fear I think a lot of this is unfounded about about what hap- what's happening in China and how this you know going to impact the stable coin tether and you know I mean uh, but the, the big it doesn't matter the, the fact of the matter is people are getting scared in the crypto in, uh, area over the last few days, they've been selling, and you know, gold. They took it. They took it on the chin uh, last week, I believe, but it's stabilized. And I think you know, people, uh, and I, I mean, I shouldn't say people, but I think institutional investors who had been buying crypto, I think are going to wait and see how the regulatory, uh, how this regulatory attack pans out, and um, they're going to, you know, probably prefer gold right now, which is not on the radar screen. Uh, of any regulator. I mean, <laughs> gold was uh, number one enemy back in the 30s, but right now, apparently, it's uh, cryptocurrency is the number one enemy, uh, you know, and so in the name of investor protection, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a huge, uh, there's a huge counter, uh, you know, I would say, to, you know, an attack by certain regulatory forces, you know, cheered on by uh, certain policymakers who do not want uh, any anything to upset the current financial system, which they figured out you know, how do they, they believe that they can control it. They believe they know how to track money in it. Apparently, you know, <laughs> there's a provision in one of these infrastructure bills to force the banks, the U.S. banks, to monitor very small, you know, relatively small transactions. And I was reading this the other day. Um, you know, we'll have to see how that all pans out. But, you know, there are a lot of regulators who do not want crypto to come and disrupt things. And, you know, so now we're, we're, we're they're, they're, they're going after the crypto complex. So gold is looking like, like uh, is like a you know fairly stable uh, alternative right now. Uh, you know as far as insurance goes. Uh, so it's it, in it's in a you know 
it's sort of benefiting here, I think, uh, from the uh, the higher risk environment that uh, cryptocurrencies now find themselves in. Now, you know, there are legitimate reasons to regulate cr- cryptocurrencies, and you know, I think in the long run that's good if it's done right. I have not seen any evidence <laughs> that uh, that you know. Yeah, I, I've seen plenty of evidence that there's some uh, that there are a lot of policy initiatives that are not being done right, and I think you know that's been a failure by some policymakers to not be on top of their game, and that they've now that now the horses left the stable, and now they're you know they're out with a big gun trying to track it down, and you know it's not so it's we're not in a you know I I, I don't have any too bad on melodramatic. Mel, <laughs> I don't want to be too dramatic here, but. Um, yeah, it's it's a tough situation right now. It could blow over in a week. You know, we, uh, the, the regulators could uh, uh, could um, you know ha- have their shot at it. And, and you know, uh, I see you know here Coinbase is is going to make some proposals. You know, maybe there will be uh, a great in the U.S. A, sort of a grand understanding of how this should proceed. But from what I sense is that the SEC is going to lean on the courts to. Uh, to uh, uh, move through its regulations, you know, so that's not a great investing environment, uh, I think. And it's, you know, so these are going to be headwinds that the, the crypto industry and cryptocurrencies are going to have to put up with. And, um, you know, we'll see how it reacts. But uh, then again, you know, you've got the Federal Reserve uh, printing money, uh, and I believe they are printing money. There are some who believe it. No, no, it's not printing money. You're, <laughs> I know all that. I know that whole argument. Of, no, it's not really printing money. No, I, I believe it is printing money. And you know, that's the people who don't think they're printing money. We uh, will have to. Uh, we'll have to agree to disagree. But uh, the you know the the fun the fundamentals, monetary fundamentals, are still good for crypto. But the uh, regulatory environment is very hostile right now, and that's just the way it is. And uh, you know, uh, that's the, the cards that are being dealt to crypto investors. And you know, gold is not having to deal with those issues. So, gold is looking relatively stable and uh, you know, probably relatively attractive. So, you know, as, 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 well, you know, gold is as an insurance is probably looking attractive to a lot of institutions right now. I would think, um, you know, given that the Fed is again in that boxing match, in a boxing match that I think a lot of people recognize, you know, that it can't win. People who thought it would be a good idea to short uranium are being burned. What's the story there? Well, I, are likely to be burned. Uh, you know, I think that it's still uh, playing out. Um, you know, uh, so uranium stocks. We talked about this, uh, I think, uh, on our last interview as well. We're, on, uh, we're about, you know, we're on a nice run, and, and I explained sort of what was going on with this brought uranium trust. So uh, we just put out our short report uh, based off of the September fifteenth IROC data, and that's you know available to Inc. Research subscribers. Um, and we noticed that there was a big jump in short interest amongst uranium stocks. Well, you know, based on our signals, you know, that there are probably, we would probably look elsewhere for short opportunities. You know, now some of them may have caught the, you know, the, 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 the sort of the 52 week highs here in the middle of the month, which is fine if you're nimble enough. Um, but I think that based on our signals, you know, short sellers should be careful. And so what I mean by that is when basically, if you're going to short a stock and, Insiders, there's strong insider commitment in the uh, in the company that you're sh- you're shorting. You know, you got your work cut out for you, and generally, we would expect uh, those shorts to lose money. But it happen, you know, sometimes uh, they win, sometimes they lose. But on general, we would expect them to lose money, especially if we have an, uh, a, a sunny or mostly sunny ink edge outlook, which is a bit broader a broader signal on the stock, which takes into account valuations and also price momentum along with the insider commitment. And, you know, the uranium group, yeah, you know, there's some weak sisters in there, of course. But, uh, you know, right now, Fed at zero, uh, you know, the narrative on the uranium market is improving. I, I, if I were a short seller or, you know, looking to take advantage of short opportunities, be nimble if you're in that group area or maybe look look elsewhere. Ted, thank you so much for chatting with us. Well, thanks for having me back, Jim. 
My guest has been Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of IncResearch.ca, his website, CanadianInsider.com. If you have any questions for Ted or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com, and we'll ask that question the next time we talk to that guest. Find us on YouTube at Talk Digital Network. We're on Twitter at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.